this episode of Media Delta, we conclude our look at the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. What's up, Dr. Robotnik? Oh wait, I already used that one. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Media Delta. Um, so this is the second of two parts of us taking a look at the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, this interesting show. Uh, and with me to talk about that, uh, I have some overlap, but also someone new to this episode. So in alphabetic order, please introduce yourself. Hello, this is Carnival back again for to see childhood things and how they compare. They don't. I'm Portable Stove, and I already knew I already took care of this childhood stuff a long time ago. They don't compare, but I still love it anyway. I'm Torpid Typist, and I'm here to slap a pair of tits on tails. Yes. Yes. So, um, the to go over what we have done so far, um, I can actually get the list of episodes that we did, um, because we did obviously we took another look at a selection of episodes we obviously we are not going to go through the entire series of this because there is like 60 some episodes and that would take way too long it would probably kill torpo i would die uh yes um actually i can go up it is not in that list it is in do it is that's the set we're doing now and we are doing So, uh, super, so the first episodes we looked at were super special Sonic search and smash squad, love sex, Sonic, mom, Robotnik's birthday, spaceman, Sonic attack on pinball fortress, Robotnik land and the Mobius 5,000. In this set we did, we did an additional seven must've been a beautiful baby. Zubotnik, Phil tilt tails to tall tails, magnificent Sonic tails, tail and sonically ever after. Um, I don't, I, wasn't trying to do a bunch of tales episodes but that's just kind of how it went um i totally didn't look at the wikipedia page and look at the sonic says segments and there the are other ones you didn't episodes. get that were really good and you fucking suck for it well i would still put good in quotation marks but yes no we did get um, one of the best I'll, yes <laughs> i'll shout out one in particular yeah. <laughs> honestly so um we're going to continue on with our questions now. Uh, we have six questions this time uh, because we kind of combined some of them so that it's not like, oh, yeah, we already talked about that. So, uh, Carnival, what were your general impressions and what episode do you want to talk about? So, uh, this is what, like I mentioned previously, this is the show I remember watching, like, just on to Disney when it was probably in its first, like, syndication era. And it's like, this isn't good, but I still had about the same much amount of fun watching it, just because I enjoyed the dumb slapstick. But in terms of episodes, I probably would have to say what was the most enjoyable, I think, Tails, 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 fucking alliteration. But because it's like, oh, hey, Tails gets to do something instead of just be basically ego stroking for the majority of the series. And even that's still tainted. Yeah. Um, so what exactly about that episode did you like? Just again, Tails had some more agency instead of just being there to either get a lesson on by Sonic or get rescued by Sonic or just make Sonic look good. Yeah, that that was a really interesting, weird episode because it also it's like also they brought in this like World War One fighter pilot in it as well. That was also a duck. And it was just That's like, rich. yeah. Yeah, there was a weird focus on characters that weren't Sonic and Tails. I will say one thing about that episode in particular is that it's kind of the inverse of the Pinball Fortress episode from last time, where it focuses on two like tertiary characters, but also there's Tails, who kind of takes the front and center in this episode, and I think it does it a lot better, generally because, you know, there's not much Sonic in it. Okay. So, uh, Steph, what about you? Um... Kind of like last time, I agree, I fully agree that this show is very bad, but it is, it is to me anyway, a very enjoyable bad in terms of just like, um, we did watch a couple of these together and I, it, it takes something for me to just laugh as hard as I have at something as completely objectively awful as must have been a beautiful baby, but in like, I can't tell if I enjoyed it, but I was definitely laughing the entire time. 
so that, that all comes out in the wash to me. Um, and I won't, I don't want to like get too deep into, uh, basically what happened in that episode. Cause I think we'll be covering that soon, but, um, just the themes and everything that happens just, it gets to be so like, it, it goes below the zero and comes right back out a 10, even though that's giving it way too much credit. I think it, it's hard to say really. Yeah, in, I could. Yeah. yeah. In essence, the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog is a land of contrast. Indeed. It's all, it's all garbage. <laughs> it's contrast of one <laughs> questionable thing to another. Yeah. <laughs> Contrasting a polished turd to normal. Uh, so yeah, I guess moving on to me. Uh, I hate the show. It's so bad. It's absolutely foul. Oh my god, it sucks. I I cannot stand to watch this show. Like I went over it last time, but this only cemented my feelings on this show just being absolute trash. I I find it hard to watch. I find it hard to pay attention and keep track of what's going on because it's unhinged, incomprehensible, nightmarish mess of things just happening and also fetish, which is my segue into the episode I want to talk about, which is It Must Have Been a Beautiful Baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one laid it on really thick. <laughs> this is, well, it's not just that, it's a twofer, which first off, Must Have Been a Beautiful Baby gave us the beautiful line, uh, <laughs> Gaga Poo Poo. Um, <laughs> it's an Poo-poo. entire fucking episode about an infantilism fetish, and it is <laughs> the worst, foulest, grossest thing. Mm-hmm. Also, when we were watching that, that, I think that is the slowest 22 minutes I've ever spent in my life. It yeah. felt like an eternity. Yeah, no, I aged was, a decade watching that. It was that's, That was the slowest episode of this entire set. It's just like, God. So, it's, it's really the culmination of everything I have against that show, which is it is 20 minutes of nothing happening. It's Robotnik turns them into babies, then Robotnik gets turned into a baby, and then they just do gross baby things and none of it makes sense and all of it's terrible and it just feels like forever and it sucks yeah and it's that, gross and it's uncomfortable yeah but then is, go ahead is it, yeah that is just a it's like it's like half of it is spent in like this daycare center yeah that, and it's it's incomprehensible and uncomfortable yeah I've, um we one thing is that i also recently um rewatched a Looney Tunes thing where Elmer and Bugs are babies and you could tell that one is just like that one has a lot more thought put into it because it is pretty much just that but like it is a normal Looney Tunes except they're babies this is just them trying to get more like really bad jokes that they couldn't do otherwise because now they're babies it, it's, it's also great because Jaleel White just puts on his Urkel voice for baby Sonic <laughs> yeah you could really tell us Jaleel White with that I'm one just waiting for him to say did I do I swear he said something along I, those lines. I, yeah, I'm sure you fairly certain he said something along that lines, but it my hatred of family matters is it, another it, issue. It, it is like a legally distinct version of that line. And then we get the Sonic says, fucking incredible. <laughs> That's right, kids. <laughs> don't play in tumble dryers. <laughs> like what the yeah. fuck? Yeah. It that, was so yeah, that's just You oh. had to be there, folks. It's it's beautiful because it's like the very indicative of we ran out of things to talk about when coming up with these, so we need to tell children to not play in tumble, tumble dryers as cool as it looks, and it looks pretty cool, kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's God. Yeah, it's like it's. I'm surprised that there. It's like this was like a year off from having a Sonic says devoted to don't. <laughs> Don't play in uh, abandoned refrigerators. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. Also, real quick, what were the ones that you talked about? You two talked about the so the episodes. Yeah, the, the, that mine was, was just the same as yours. So I, I said the tales tale. So you forgot to mention the best part about that one, which is the Sonic says that gave us tails smoking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that was a that was a different one because I don't that think was I watched tales. that. One. Oh, two tall tails, yeah. No, full tilt tails. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yep. full tilt tails is smoking safety, Ta- which is hilarious. And I yeah, want, t- I wish I was the one who got that cell of tails smoking a cigarette. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess tails, tails, tails uh, Sonic Sauce segment was about com- the wonderful things that are computers. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. Computers Stop are beeping. <laughs> I guess one thing cool. to just kind of uh, throw out there real quick under the general impression 
is kind of as Torpo said, honestly, all of these pretty much run together at a certain point. So like, I can't remember particular details from many of the episodes, just that, oh, there are scenes in the show that happen. And I can remember those. I just can't be asked to remember which episode they're in. I just remember the cursed elements of these episodes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, it, it doesn't help that they're all just a bunch of loosely strung together gags, which is why they blend together, because they're barely there in their own episode. Just yeah, shit they keeps have, happening. They have no connecting thread to them, so yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess for me, uh, the one that I'd like to talk about, um, of the ones we did, uh, I, I just thought that like Full Tilt Tales just has a really kind of dumb kind of plot device where basically uh, so- or Robotnik is trying to uh, get everyone as fast as Sonic so he invents gum. Uh, so then eventually it just um, sticks to his shoe and somehow that still works. So it sticks, sticks to his tail shoe and now all of a sudden Tails is just as fast as Sonic. You know, kind of how he has been in the first place and they just made it in this episode that he's really slow and it just seems like it seems like a template episode for any uh show that has a hero and a sidekick where the hero uh, the sidekick all of a sudden becomes the hero it's kind of sucks at it because that's exactly what happens in this episode yeah the best part is he does literally everything sonic does the same way but gets fucked for it and nobody learns a lesson except yeah. tails you can never be the main character suck shit <laughs> pretty much yeah the, you only get a game gear game that's it all two of them that's the point. One of them was actually pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah, unlike that episode. Um, also, Two Tall Tales is just, okay, uh, that that was a plot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> at least, especially now in the internet age. Are you going to talk about how you have a, ter- a, a town made of people who are hot dogs selling hot dogs for people to eat? I forgot. Like, I, I kind of want to talk about that for a second. I, how I think weird and I, fucked up it is. Uh, I think when we get to the the question about <laughs> the, the favorite questionable moment, I think we can talk about that because I think that also <laughs> fits into that. <laughs> Are there actually? Uh, I take that back. So, how do you feel about the settings and characters? Why don't we just go straight into that? I fucking but, hate them all. They all suck. Is that what you want to hear? I mean, that, that, that is an answer to that question. The, the setting is just, once again, set dressing. Like, it's barely there. Nobody cares about it. It's, it's just a backdrop to all these dumb gags and these fucking awful characters. All, all of them are terrible. Like, even when Tails tries to be good, he still sucks. And Sonic's always insufferable. Robotnik puts on a show, but still sucks and does really weird, questionable shit. And then the robots also suck. Yeah. So, what about you, Stove? You take that back about the robots. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, they yeah. round her an ass. <laughs> Why do they keep giving him hands? Is Why the do they question. give Robotnik an ass as well? I don't know. Well, Robotnik, you know, he... Just it makes person. sense for him to have an ass. They don't need to give him an ass, though. He's egg-shaped. He he has a crack that is at least as big as Tails' arm, but that's... <laughs> crack is here. whack. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, is, of course the egg is cracked. <laughs> Okay, um, in particular with these set of episodes, um, because I think I pretty much gave what I said the first time as well, which is Sonic kind of sucks, Tails is eh, okay. The villains are all pretty much the best part of the show, Robotnik especially. Um, but yeah, in this set, we got like the babysitter who kind of sucks, or the daycare lady. We have um, the gal who wants to make a zoo in the second episode. Oh, right. I forgot about that. We, the, yeah. the heavy metal ass lady. Yeah, no, yeah. it's like, you came from a different genre completely. What are you doing here? Fucking Red Sonia just shows up to imprison <laughs> all Mac the animals. on Eggman. <laughs> Red, Red Sonia, who then turns into, like, an enemy from, like, an 80s arcade game. It's like yeah. this weird heart-shaped thing. <laughs> sure, I will say really quick, at least it seems like the voice actors are all having fun with it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, and then bef- I don't want to go through like every single character, but the only one that does show up multiple times is Dr. Van, uh, Van Schlemmer, who sucks. I hate him. <laughs> He's he is the worst. Uh, uh, also, the, yeah. daycare, the daycare lady shows up in two episodes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, she, like I said, she's eh. 
nothing yeah. really. But Von Schlemmer just fucking sucks. I would much rather have Wes Weasley back, honestly. No, I love my crazy German scientist stereotype. It's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Yep. He's a, he's a genius, but also he's a dipshit. So, you know, it's both sides. Waka waka. That's all I all got. Right. <laughs> all right. What about you, Carnival? Like, I... I never, it's like, I was here for just Looney Tunes ass gags, and that's like anything else is just set dressing. Just that's like, I didn't care, except for when things got egregious. Like, when they had Red Sonia show up, and it's like, okay, this is, that was something. We need to clarify that is not Red Sonia, but goddamn, she looks like her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. She looks like it co- came from a completely different show, too, which is great. Like, and all like she wants old... to do is bone down with her botnik, and it's weird and uncomfortable and gross. <laughs> like, it's like Red Sonia if she were drawn by the people who did the old She-Ra and He-Man shows. Yeah. And it's the we- it's just like, what? what is this? I wonder if that was an episode that was animated by TMS, and they just got one of the other, like, someone from the team that was working on He-Man, or had worked on He-Man, because I- or was that him? Anyway, it, it just seemed like it worked on some Western cartoon. Um, cause yeah. Uh, also the, the town of hot dogs. Uh, <laughs> oh, also, uh, it was great cause watching, uh, the one with the, the tales tale episode and going in, seeing the thing where that's like, Oh, they're going around the world to see and try and save something. And then we see it go into a jungle and we're just kind of like, Oh no, please. No. <laughs> I was just going to go. And it thankfully they chose to just do a George of the Jungle ass dude. Yeah, that was like, oh, I appreciate you your restraint for that. That thank you. Because in that last set of episodes, they did go the other direction. Thankfully, they didn't do it again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, the characters in this thing are all over the place. Uh, also, we got a return of Mama Robotnik. I forgot um, about that. Yeah. Uh, she is the thing that is the creature or the person who actually saves. Uh, Robotnik, I guess. From... It's just, it's such an uncomfortable episode. Yeah. yeah. Also, we see a return of the uh, rat with the uh, uh, fishnets. We find out she's a, she's actually a possum. Yes. In in a saloon in this western part. We're doing she Blazing Saddles. the sheriff yeah. for no discernible reason. Yeah. Um, also, there were guns, but they weren't guns, so it was fine. They were yeah. Guns. Yes. Uh, that will come up in a later question. Um. So... Why don't we just go into this question? Uh, what was your favorite questionable uh, fetish enactment? I mean, moment from the set. <laughs> Let, uh, let's be starting real. With Carnival. The only thing that comes up that's like the worst is that fucking baby episode because it's just in your face and does not stop. Uh, I would also argue that two tall tales also <laughs> counts. <laughs> um, because yeah, what? like that must have been a beautiful ba- baby. It's like not only is it very heavily, heavily infant, like. Heavily into infantilization. Uh, does also start out with uh, Tails getting huge. <laughs> okay, but you know, what's wrong with Tails becoming huge and eating everything inside? Yeah, also... Enlighten so you, me, tell so, me. So so you get the just the huge variant and must have been a beautiful baby. Then you get a completely different version of Two Tall Tails. You get, really get to see Tails eat a lot of things and then grow really huge. <laughs> and then eat more. He's nothing but hungry while he's giant. Remember that. Square cube law! Square cube law! All he wants to do is eat when he's giant, and it's <laughs> wonderful. He's burning so much energy to maintain that mass that shouldn't work because of physics. But anyway, it's like, again, Two Tall Tales is just, I still find it less in your face than fucking baby episode. I mean, that 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 one was one for the stars. <laughs> like that it's fucking one. egregious. <laughs> Can yeah. I uh can I request that I be leapfrogged over because I have I actually have a thing that might uh I don't know if Torpo has it so I'll just No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Okay. So, while I was thinking about it, I decided to I joked about this last time. I do have in fact a list of shit that I have that uh I can remember from these episodes. Uh-huh. Um so in Must Have Been a Beautiful Baby kind of as discussed already we have into, uh, infantilization and inflation, technically, with tails just growing, like, grotesquely big. Huge and, like, yeah. bulbous and gross. Yeah, very weight gainy. Yeah, weight gain for sure. Um, also, technically aging up, I guess, if you want to count 
<laughs> Robotnik just becoming an old man out of nowhere. Um, in Zubotnik, what I have written down here is femdom. Mm, oh, right. <laughs> just... Yeah, that. Uh, also, the thing about uh, Zubotnik that I want to point out, the reason why I picked it now that I think about it, is because the episode kept on coming up in the new, in the upcoming thing, and the thumbnail <laughs> is the screenshot of what takes like two seconds. <laughs> The show of Sonic getting very big, and very very muscly. ripped. Yeah, he gets very ripped. I, I is there a term for that? I don't know. There is. I don't know it. There's pro- there's a term for everything. We've been on the internet long enough to know Dream that muscle fetishism is very a thing. But yeah, also... it could just be that. Um, if you know what the term is, and listener, uh, feel free Please to tweet don't. at Lola. Would that be muscle <laughs> expansion? Yes, it is muscle expansion. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Um, two tall tales. Obviously, we have the macro element. And technically speaking, being that they are a town of weenies selling weenies, technically speaking, it is Vor. <laughs> Vor and hey, let's not forget that all tales wants to do while Giant is eat. Yeah. <laughs> After having just eaten a shitload of food on camera, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you got that. Um, Magnificent Sonic. I just wrote down the possum is back. Yeah. Because there's... <laughs> I mean, I guess if you have a thing for cowboys, I don't fucking know. Um, Tails Tale, I don't have anything for that either, except for maybe bondage with Sonic also, being please. put in jail. Last thing I need to imagine is Sonic saying, why can't I quit you? <laughs> 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 and uh, Sonically Ever After, which is the one I would have picked, is... Uh, oh no, Tails. I forgot. I am a girl. <laughs> yeah. Not, awesome. Oh no, yeah. I forgot. It's why am I a girl in this fairy tale? <laughs> Also, I want to say it was like, why am I a girl? And then immediately, like, I'm fine with this. Yeah. Uh, for reference, Tail got a pair of tits. Tails yeah. got a pair of tits. Oh, yeah, no. Also, like, you could have had, like, Tails in, like, a princess costume. It was, it's like uh, like a a child's uh, princess costume. But and no, Tails was already, it. like, a feminine outfit in that bit. But also, they gave Tails tits, so you can know, definitely. Yeah, Tails no, tits. Tails... Tails has very defined cleavage in the fucking dress that he's in during uh, Sonically Ever After. He's uh, supposed to be Gretel, by the way, or yeah, Nettle, this, or whatever the fuck the fairy yeah, he's supposed, supposed to be. Gretel, this child. Yeah, and for for reference as well, uh, I don't think it's touched on in any of these episodes. Tails is like four, so yeah, he's you know, so. he is very like b- below ten at least. So unless he bloomed early, that's. So yeah, that's that's uh, yes, uh, the precocious puberty. That's what we need to talk about. Yeah, just add that to the list. <laughs> so, so what's your favorite Torpo? Um, I'm gonna go back to what was it, Zubotnik, where we have the Red Sonia. Yes, because mm-hmm. that entire episode makes me fucking uncomfortable. Because I hate that really obsessive character who wants to marry and also bone down. And I, I don't need this weird Yandere bullshit in my life. Drawn extremely horny, by the way. Yeah, like, incredibly yeah. horny. Like, like when, Red Sonia. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say when I said heavy metal, it is not. It is like because it's like she's wearing like a like think of, like one piece swimsuit. Wil- yeah, like Wilma's thing from Flintstones with leggings that I don't. They might have been like crotch high boots. <laughs> they were. No, we went over this. They they they're extra thigh high boots because you can't actually see where they. <laughs> I yeah. will give this this set of episodes this. It kind of does establish Robotnik does not, in fact, fuck. <laughs> no mustache wife's also this set of episodes. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, it's what's even the point. But yeah, just that that entire episode is gross and makes me uncomfortable. That kind of obsessive character, I absolutely despise that kind of shit. Yeah, that it's not great. Um, so uh, moving on from that. I don't know if I can add anything onto that that I've oh already God, added. Yes. So, time. so Torpo, what has been your favorite Sonic says so far? Oh, there's so many and they're so good. <laughs> I okay. So this is gonna make me sound like a bad person. Does it have to be from this set? Let's go a full thing. We can. You can do it. Okay. So this it. is gonna make me sound like a bad person, but I have to say the sexual assault one. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Yeah. No, it, it it talks about a very real problem, but it does it very poorly. Doesn't really give good information, and it's so deeply uncomfortable that they never actually make a joke about it. It's the only Sonic says without like a bit or a joke in it. 
and you can tell how c- uncomfortable they were writing every bit of that Sonic says in its its art. Yeah, that that was the only one that just solely has Sonic in it. Um, Saying, "Hey kids, this is some fucked up shit," but also the advice they give is really, really bad. Yeah, the yeah. The, the advice in these have not been that great. Um, like outside of just straight up saying, "Okay, don't go in a tumble dryer." Like, sure, that's fine. But it, it also, may look cool, but don't. It's not fun. It's dangerous. The, the computer one also was like really weirdly off. The like computers it was are fu- fucking uh, yeah. They're dark, dark piles of sorcery that we barely understand that only seek to cause us pain. So yeah, it's it's my favorite, not because it's good, but because it's very bad, and I feel the need to talk about it every time because it just sticks out so fucking. Oh, yeah. That's my uh, feeling about the show itself. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah. All right, so um, what about you? Oh, boy. There's, like, what, 62 of these? Fucking hell. Um, Specifically 65. 65. I will just stick with the very easy-to-go-to Tumblr dryer one. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> hey, kids, <laughs> don't go in the dryer. It may look cool, but it isn't. It's dangerous. You, you know what? It's- I'm surprised there isn't one of, or maybe it's just my dumbass. Uh, which was going down the stairs in a cardboard box. <laughs> that is very sp- like my favorite part about the tumble dryer one is he specifically says it may look cool, but it is. <laughs> like if you go in a tumbler dryer, you may be all wet. <laughs> like Sonic, nobody's thought that. Like even as a kid, you know that shit is dangerous. <laughs> I mean, again, I think it is kind of a you had to be there thing because I depends I on like... if you have a front loader or not. Yeah. Um, I will also, uh, hey, Tails, don't stand on a swivel chair. Please be careful. <laughs> uh, okay. I do want to throw out a mention as well to the gun control one. Where, yeah. Hey, we're cartoons. We don't get hurt, but someone can actually get hurt if you use a gun. So don't do it. Also, it's, it's really. Yeah. Um, I was uh, so not... when was that episode? The, that was Magnificent Sonic. Yeah, but what year did these air again? Uh, 1993. Okay. Well, it was before yeah. Columbine, so... It was a few years before Columbine, but it's uh, still... So, uh, specifically on the note for that episode, uh, according to Wikipedia, uh, for Magnificent Sonic, notes, this episode was banned for Fox Kids airing due to the Columbine High School Massacre in 1999. Nowadays, yep. the episode is no longer banned and continues to show on many TV networks. I just, I, I felt that worth mentioning, too. It's just, yeah, this was actually briefly banned because of Columbine. Yeah, also, man, now I'm just kind of depressed thinking about what if cartoons nowadays had these segments. Oh, God, it'd be fucking rough and heavy, especially because, like, cartoons have been getting more serious and, like, more mature about how they treat kids. Yeah. Instead of treating, like, absolute idiots. Yeah. I mean, let's be real. We could, I could probably point at Steven Universe as a giant long PSA on on things I, like acceptance, so... Yeah, but I mean, also, they've been doing a bunch of bits on, like, uh, bullying. That's been a big one. Uh, also, thinking about the gun safety one, it's just thinking of, like, uh, a show that... When did Gargoyles air? Because Gargoyles th- was nineteen nine late 90s, 90s... I believe, like, 98 to, nine, to 2000. Yeah, because their take on gun safety was a lot different, where one of the gargoyles just straight up shot one of the cop characters on accident. It was 94 to 97. Ah. Hmm. Yeah, so that was a lot more direct of a gun safety message. Yeah, and it was much more memorable because, like, oh, fuck, the cop learns, oh, I should actually keep my guns in a lockbox, and that character's like, nah, fuck guns, I go out of my way to destroy these things every time. Yeah. Um, so, Stove, did you go? I've already forgotten. Uh, yeah. yeah, Stove, went, it's, yeah. It's carnival. Don't okay. go into no a dryer. Carnival. Right. Okay, Carnival, what about you? Uh, probably don't go into a dryer just because of the sheer <laughs> fucking, like, what? So, <laughs> just... the um, uh, so to go through some of the ones that I kind of, that we could have gone through, uh, one was chemicals, gangs, yeah. warming up, uh, we did stupidity with Attack on Pinball Fortress. Go to school. Can go to school, go to school, repeat steps one and two, um, walking alone, uh, medicine, uh, common colds. I'm saying you never law- did remembering your phone number. Yeah. <laughs> um, obeying laws and going to court. What? <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, currents and riptides, um, peer pressure, 
Darren's tumble dryers. Uh, sleep, shallow water, bicycle safety. bicycle safety check, home safety, using your brain, which I don't know how that differs from the stupidity one, uh, poison ivy, rubbish, pets, stealing, seatbelt safety, wisdom of elders. Um, also, a note apparently this is the only episode in which Sonic does not appear in the Sonic Says segment. <laughs> Running away, healthy diets, strangers, reading, false advertising, hearing, <laughs> telling parents where you're going, uh, trees, sunburns, there's remember your phone number, graffiti, dares, sloths. Uh, the, okay, there's sexual harassment again. Swimming alone, breakfast, vandalism, <laughs> tooth pain, road safety, and library. Library was a... Uh, that was the last episode. Sonic the very Rocker. last one. And it was they very much knew they weren't going to get renewed or anything. So it was like this weird way to cap off the show, too. Yep. Because that was, I believe, the last one in, in production. Go read a book. Uh, which, is, which is great, because you could really tell the budget on that one. Uh, so, yes. So, uh, just to kind of go over these couple, uh, since we're kind of almost wrapping this up. Uh, how do you feel this used elements of the game? Carnival. What elements? This was fucking, I guess, Tails can fly and Sonic runs fast. Robotnik makes robots. That's about the end all of the extent of the games they use. <laughs> all right. What about your stuff? Yeah, this set of episodes they didn't use. Unlike last time where they just kind of gleaned some shit, this uh, group of episodes just completely did not use a single thing from the game. And what about you, Torpo? Yeah, so they have shit they could pick from if they wanted to, but instead they make a bunch of their own unique characters and they all fucking suck. And once again, Sonic is fast, Tails can fly, and I mean, some of these characters get reused for the Mean Bean Machine, I guess, but overall, yeah. no, it makes no use of it whatsoever. Oh, I mean, I come to think of it, Tails can fly, he also does fly a plane, so there's that, I guess. That is true. Um, I wanna... Yeah, and yeah, it just does it. He uses the about as much information as Sonic 1 had, which was like, oh, hey, here's your basic thing. Uh, here you go. Like, those games were really not heavy in plot, much like this show. Um, so our last question, how do you feel? Do you feel that this adds anything to your enjoyment of anything Sonic? No, it makes me hate it, actually. <laughs> Because it means Sonic birthed this awful foul creature and it exists and there's nothing we can do to take it back. <laughs> All right. What about you, Stuff? I mean, as a compliment to the games, no. Um, as a compliment to my fucking life, sure. Why not? There's, there's a lot of good music to come out of this fucking bad show, but I love it so much. It is also uh, one of the progenitors of YouTube poop. <laughs> yep. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, what about you, Carnival? See, I, as, again, as a compliment to the games, oh, God, no. But it's like, I had fun. This was good fun. It's like mindless entertainment. I can deal with that. Okay. Yeah, it's just, yeah, like, I actually watched this more than I played the Sonic games when I was, like, when this was airing, mainly because so my sorry. Genesis was on the fritz most of the time when I was younger. So very sorry. Like, Sonic 1 is not <laughs> great, but it's better than this. Yeah, because I, I, it's great because I had Sonic 1, Sonic 2, and Sonic and Knuckles with no three. <laughs> so. All you yeah. can do is and Knuckles. You can't three. Yeah. So, yeah, this really does not need. It uses the base stuff. Sucks from ass. Yeah. So speaking of that, um, I guess we now can rank this. So garbage. let's go through our 21 point scale. So we use 21 point scale. Uh, with one being considered Universal Mastercraft, 21 being don't even bother in that it's not even fun to watch with friends and kind of goof on. Um, so I have the rankings that we get, had from the last set. Uh, so Axe is not here, but he said that, or they get, said that it would be an 11. Uh, Stove, you said that this should be a 12. Dorpo said that it should be a 17. Because it's hilarious. And, and I said it should be a 19. Which is oh, our fascinating fuck. nightmare uh, nightmare thing. So this Carnival. Is fucking 19. What are you <laughs> like I love this, but no, this is something you watched for the watch the horror unfold. This is a 19 easily. <laughs> I just I'm just saying, way past its prime is hilarious to me specifically. <laughs> Alright, Stove, what about you? Okay, so I guess kind of in my on my end, I just thought of it as based on like it being an adaptation of a video game. I still think it's like better than a lot of other ones. 
Um, that being said, no, I do absolutely agree that it should belong at uh, 19. It is more of a fascinating nightmare, if anything. I mean, yeah, really, the more I've seen of it, the more I agree. But also, I just find 17 funny, typically. The only thing I would say... Hmm, the only thing that I'm saying about... I'm thinking about this, because I'm looking at the other stuff we have in this list. Um, we have Salamander at 15. And we have that Super Mario Brothers Princess Peach one at eighteen. Mm. Yeah, so nineteen. Yeah, right, because I would honestly really watch the I'd watch this show over both of those. Now, now that I really, think, yes, I, I would say the Super Mario Brothers one maybe because there's at least there it's a cursed thing happening, but it's at least something happening. But also nineteen, such a weird thing altogether. That yeah. it's kind of it's kind of it's low, but it's also high in a weird way. Like if you think would, about the numbers going lower to like higher, you have it like starts. If you're thinking about like a chart of enjoyment, it starts out high and then starts to re- build down. But once you hit 19, there's a weird hump there, and then it just goes like super steep going into 20. Okay, so I'll, I'll be real. I would rather watch Salamander, but I can understand wanting to watch this over Mario just because like Mario is somehow even more incomprehensible in nonsense. But at least Salamander has some production values and things make sense and are fairly coherent and things happen. I have a prediction. This won't be the last time we say I would much rather watch Sonic over Mario. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. But yeah, I would say that 19 just kind of occupies this nebulous space of it is a fucking train wreck, but also I would definitely still watch it, probably. I can't say the same thing about the uh, Sonic, uh, the Mario OVA. Yeah. And I just, I didn't. So the, the point is, for 19, is it is a fucking foul piece of work, but it's interesting to see and worth watching, but not in a way that is good or enjoyable. It's just something to see. Which I can, de- yeah, that is... Yeah, the more I think about 19 is probably yeah. the best. Yeah, I think it, I think it kind of has to belong in 19. It's the same thing that in the game sense that Ernest Evan belongs in. That game's terrible, but it's a fascinating thing to watch. Or like Tower Juwaga. Again, terrible game, but also kind of fascinating. Yeah, and I, um, I kind of get this impression, like, obviously, Torpo, you fucking hate the show. But I get the feeling you get, like, at least a little bit of enjoyment out of Sonic Says, if anything. Yeah. Yeah, so there's one aspect. I I definitely say night. Oh, I would I would yeah. never say this is a twenty one. This definitely doesn't deserve that at least. Yeah, yeah. Because like just a point of comparison for the stuff that we've watched that is twenty one. Got uh, Megami Tensei that was twenty one. Yeah. Yeah, like twenty one isn't worth watching at all. But this is at least fascinating. Like, this is interesting, but not because it's good. Yeah. Um. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so let's see. Um. Pointing out things. Uh, so, do we want to give any thumbs up to music, charm, uh, cinematography, storytelling, action, and art? No. No. Nah, I'm good. Do we want to give anything to charm? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> voice acting, maybe? Is there anything for that? I, I would like to point out we do have a thing for campy charm. I, would... I don't think it's charming at all, though. Like, the only thing I. In... Like, the only even remotely charming thing is the sonic says and that's in spite of itself okay i i can i can see that um so i guess we'll just leave it blank or yeah. do we want to give anything thumbs down how about the animation can i give the animation the animation oh okay. yeah, yeah, yeah we can do that i'll give the art thumbs down also uh, oh yeah another 21 was a uh, panzer dragoon which i would much rather watch this any day of the week than panzer dragoon um God, panzer dragoon is miserable yeah uh, also, yay or nay, I can't think of anything particular to say other than just giving it the 19, because I think that kind of says all it is. Also, it's Sonic, the Adventure of Sonic the Hedgehog. I feel like its notoriety just has all to say about it's, anything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it speaks for itself. Okay, so I can, I can leave it at art for thumbs down, and that's it. Yeah, that's well, fun to me. Well, there we have it. There's Adventure of Sonic the Hedgehog. There's one of the five sonic shows well four that we well one of the four that we'll consider because there's one that we sh- we shall not ever go back to yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna need to be given money for that one that's gonna be an incentive for something <laughs> new patreon new 300 dollars a month goal for patreon i, I will that, wash that. my hands of that completely <laughs> thank you i was not I'm a sorry. part of that i refuse to be a part of it <laughs> 
I have no clue what you're talking about, and I feel like <laughs> I me not paying attention for like the briefest has done me. Sonic under No! No! <laughs> <laughs> Never like again. Never again. Yeah. I, I just pay me three hundred dollars a month to put my nuts in a vice and that would be more <laughs> enjoyable. <laughs> God. Anyway. Yes, that'll do it for the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. And Sonic the Hedgehog for a while. I don't know if I'll put Sad Am for a vote for a while. Just to Sonic give us some dead to me. Also, unfortunately, that means we're probably going to need to do something Mario related to compare. And I'm not I'm almost looking about as much to those than I am to Sonic Underground. Uh, <laughs> so that won't be that'll be for that won't be for a while. But anyway. I'll definitely do it for the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. So before we go, uh, do you all have anything to plug, starting with Carnival? Uh, yeah, this uh, within probably a week of when this releases, I'll be hosting a new tabletop actual play podcast with in which Lolo and Torpo both participants in. Uh, that'll be at the, da- the Daft Dice Project, and you can follow that on Twitter at Daft Dice Pod. All right. Uh, what about you, Stove? Um, I'm Portable Stove. You can follow me at twitch.tv slash Portable Stove. I play Sonic games sometimes. Uh, I'm not playing any Sonic Underground related games. There are Haram hacks, by the way. Don't ask any about them. Um, and recently I've been uploading some uh, bullshit to you. Just search for Portable Stove. That's about it. All right, what about you, Torpo? I'm twitch.tv slash Typist as well as at Typist on Twitter. And I would like to plug the holes in my fucking psyche. <laughs> All right. So uh, next week, we have something completely different uh, in which we are taking a look at the movie Little Nemo Adventures in Slumberland, uh, which is a pretty interesting film, uh, both like content wise and uh, production wise, uh, because it is a simul- it is a kind of a partnered Japanese American release. And that apparently, if I remember correctly, uh, Miyazaki, uh, Hayao Miyazaki, has something to do with it. I don't know to what extent, but I'm pretty sure he is involved in that. Um, but yeah, that will be next week. So thank you all for listening. This has been another episode of Media Delta. If you would like to view the entire list of rankings for yourself, you can go to r3.ldp.life to see the residence and essence list that Media Delta covers, as well as the other lists that are covered by our sister show, Retro Rank Rhapsody. If you'd like to watch Retro Rank Rhapsody, you can watch it live on Fridays at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Saturdays at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash loadedpuzzle. Or you can view any of the episodes anytime at youtube.ldp.life. If you would like to help with hosting costs, you can go to patreon.ldp.life and help out with a $2 or $5 pledge. If you would like to discuss this episode and any other episode of our community, you can join our Discord server at discord.ldp.life. If you want to follow the show on Twitter, you can follow it at Hazeltown Story, or you can follow me, your host, at Lolo DePuzzlo. Thank you for listening, and I hope you come back for a round for the next episode. <laughs>